Welcome to this historical tour on the Golden or Goldfields pipeline. With the discovery of gold in Kalgoorlie in 1893, there was a tremendous demand for water during the hot summer months. Large condensers were built to distill water to make it drinkable. Water was an expensive commodity. 2003 marked the centenary of the largest water pipeline in the world at that time. The architect of the scheme was engineer C.Y. O'Connor. His idea was to build a large weir on the Helena River near Mundaring and to pipe the water 563 kilometers uphill to the desert city of Kalgoorlie. Planning commenced in 1895 with construction from 1897. Mundaring Weir is still used today to provide water for Perth and the gold fields. Although it used to overflow regularly, an uh, increase in the height of the dam in 1954 has increased its capacity and it very rarely overflows now with the increased demand for water. The completion of the Eastern Railway to Northam and then in 1897 the Goldfields Railway to Kalgoorlie provided the basis for the pipeline. Eight pumping stations were constructed along the route with large imported boilers and economizers for each pumping station. Boilers were driven by steam from wood-powered uh, fires. Babcox and Wilcox boilers were imported from England. The finished steam engines and pumping equipment was very impressive. No one was sure if the scheme would actually work and it took a considerable time of pumping before the water finally reached Kalgoorlie. This is starting the B engine in the number one pump station just below Mundaring Weir. The construction of the pipeline was considerably aided by the railway which had been completed in 1897. Construction of a section of the pipeline most of the pipeline was built on wooden and later concrete blocks above the ground. An early steam train with a full load of pipes for the Golden Pipeline. The pipeline was unique in its time in using Mason Ferguson lock fire steel over a riveted or welded steel pipe. The lock bar design provided an efficient joint in the manufacture of the pipes. Thinner steel plate could be used, reducing cost and weight of each pipe. The lock is approaching Mount Charlotte, the reservoir which was built in Kalgoorlie to store the water from the pipeline. The uh, patent for the pipe was issued in 1896. Meffin Ferguson established a manufacturing facility on the main railway line east of Perth. Steel for the pipe was imported from the United States, Germany and England. The pipe was to be manufactured for the next 40 years. Here the pipe crosses the gully. The uh, water scheme required 760 millimeter diameter steel pipe 
over 66,000 pipes measuring 8.5 meters each. Construction of the Mount Charlotte Reservoir in Kalgoorlie in preparation for the arrival of the water. The arrival of the water in Kalgoorlie at Mount Charlotte before it surpassed the audience. The water was to guarantee the future of the city and to bolster agriculture along the route. On January the 24th, 1903, the reservoir gradually began to fill. A very faded and tattered photograph of the grand opening with the former premier, Sir John Ford. Mount Charlotte Reservoir today, the area serviced by the pipeline includes an area equivalent to two-thirds of Tasmania and the pipeline services 100,000 people in Calgary and 6 million sheep. A recent view of the pipeline The Goldfields Pipeline was one of the momentous uh, constructions in Australian history. Thanks for joining me on this tour of the history of the Goldfields Pipeline. Photographs are courtesy of the Batty Library of Western Australia.